Hello everybody. This is Voice of Philosophy, Dr. An's YouTube Philosophy Lecture. Today, Unit 26 from Leibniz to Spinoza Summary. Hegel's Perception in the Phenomenology of Mind, Part 3, page 98 to page 102. First chapter. The eternal subject of the uh, philosophy, the concept of the substance. The theme of this lecture is Hegel's interpretation of the life of Spinoza. Hegel's book, Phenomenology of Mind, is too difficult to understand until now. The full text of this lecture uh, is uh, linked below. The aim of this presentation is to paraphrase the original thesis more easily and interestingly. One who uh, wants to know more academically must see Hegel's text or my thesis about it. To make uh, something easy or interesting means to reduce or to edit it. Therefore, easy explanation of the original thought is in danger of misreading and misunderstanding of it. However, making philosophy easy and interesting helps uh, readers broaden and deepen their original uh, thinking power. In the foregoing lecture, we have seen Hegel's solution of the substance attributes problem. As a matter of fact, the, the essence of Western philosophy can be said to lie in the concepts of being and the substance, as Aristotle said. These problems are still matters of the philosophical concern. The English empiricists uh, deny the reality of the substance notion, therefore an empiricist like Hume came to deny even his own self-identity and confessed his skepticism about it. Self-identity belongs to the notion of a substance. Leibniz recognized only human spiritual substance and named it monad. On the contrary, the substance of matter was renounced because the matter was considered as a composite which is divided into simple things named substances. Whereas the spirit or mind was recognized as simple substance, that is monad by Leibniz. The monad is said to have an inner activity which is called the perception. The structure of inner perception of a monad was determined as the multiplicity in the unity. The monad as a simple substance is unalterable and eternal. Therefore, the monad has its own self-identity upon which Leibniz established the principle of identity of the indiscernibles. The number of monads as spiritual atom is many as the number of the material atom is many. According to Leibniz, the monad is a created finite substance. Chapter 2. Being for itself and being for others. Hegel, however, designates the problem of the monadology of Leibniz just at this point. Namely, Hegel suspects that the monad is absolutely isolated, independent substance and indifferent to other monads. His instruments of the criticism of monad is the conceptual pair of being for itself, being for other. Leibniz, by means of his fundamental principle of individuality, brings out the essentiality of the opposite aspect of Spinoza's philosophy, existence for self, the monad, Hegel, history of philosophy. As in the citation scene, Hegel apprehended the monad of Leibniz as the being for itself or existence for self, which is the opposite aspect of Spinoza's philosophy. I will speak of Spinoza later in order, in order to now focus on the being for itself and the being for others. On the existential philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre has also accepted the uh, conceptual couple of the being for self and being for others as the binary aspects of the consciousness. However, the term pair of the being for itself, being for other, originated from Hegel's own problem horizon. Hegel's being for itself referred to the independent self-existing being, which corresponds to the monad of Leibniz. However, Hegel thinks that the number of the monad is plural, therefore, individual monad cannot be truly independent being substance. The monads are said to have no external relationship between themselves. They are being for themselves. However, a monad is being for others as well as being for self. 
the being for an other of a more than baby only apprehended by us the outside observers. I am also the other to the other, therefore being for myself is simultaneously being for other. In other words, being for other is already comprised in being for myself. From the standpoint of the being for itself, Morada Hegel writes that the being for itself counts the determination of being for others as inessential. This thought can be applied to everyday talk like uh, ignore the other's opinion about you when he doesn't know the situation around you. Hegel's being for others is connected to the social aspect of a person which can be uh, enormously complicated and uh, alterable. A human meets with a great deal of other humans for all his life and enter into relation, interacts with them, however, in the, uh, in the end, split up with them. In Buddhistic maxim, it is stated that those who meet must part, Heja Zhengni in Chinese. Hegel's criticism of philosophy of Monad is likened to the poetical phrase of John Donne that man is not an island. No man is an island, entire of itself, which is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Chapter 3, A Contradiction of Being for Itself and Being for Others and the Transport to the Philosophy of One Being. Hegel's conception of the being for itself and the being for others is a very useful instrument of the human thought, which can be applied to many personal and social lives. For example, the monad as a being for itself thinks that it can own, deny the being for others totally. In the life world, this means that one breaks up all his social relations and retires into a lonely life. In the Hegel text, it reads that the elimination of the being for others results in the denial of the being for itself because, as over said, they are doubly diverse aspects of one and the same thing. Hegel determines this state of affairs as an absolute neg uh, negation or the, uh, the negation relating itself to itself is die sich auf sich beziehende negation in German. The negation that denies all the otherness except itself brings about eventually its own negation. The thing is set up as having a being of its own and existing for itself or as an absolute negation of all the all otherness. Hence, it is absolute negation merely relating itself to itself. But this kind of negation is a canceling and a superseding of itself, or means that it has its essential reality in an other. In this regard, the independence of a substance or monad is exposed to the contradiction, therefore superseded, sublated. The fundamental reason of sublation of monad as being for itself is that it is finite or the number of it is plural. However, rightly said that the monad is windowless, that is, monads have no interrelationship, interaction between themselves. Further, he maintains that windowless monads live peacefully with one another through the pre-established harmony given by God. Hegel didn't think of this as philosophical, autonomous thinking. The one substance philosophy of Spinoza and the hentai pan of young Hegel and his friends. Actually, the Sp uh, Spinoza part is not much in the phenomenalism of mind. In other words, the Spinoza philosophy is briefly revealed as the solution of the problem of Leibnizian monad. However, in Hegel's young days, Hegel and his friends, Herdlin and Schelling, were fascinated by the motto hentai pan one and all, which he might connect to the one substance philosophy of Spinoza. Both one substance and Han Kaipan refer to the unification of the divided opposed. In their young days, three friends were very interested in the so-called unification philosophy. In his early writing, Hegel said, when in the life of humans, the power of the unification disappears, and the opposite lose the, the library correlation and interaction and acquired independence that neither philosophy generates.
The slogan of Han Kai Pan and the unification philosophy of Hegel circle had a great deal with the situation of Germany at that time, which was still uh, feudal and politically divided and socially underdeveloped. Spinoza himself defended his concept of the substance as the being in itself and conceived through itself. The notion of the being in itself has a profound meaning that something has its root of existence inside itself. Therefore, Spinoza said of self-causation, causa sui. We often say, I am not born because of my wish. This means that my origin and the cause is not myself, but the otherness, that is, my parents. If someone says, I am born because of my wish, he is God. Therefore, our cause of existence is outside of us. Spinoza determined the mode as something, the cause of which resides outside itself. Mode is all things in nature, the universe, the world of individuals. Spinoza identified the substance with the self-cause with God. The God of Spinoza is like that of Christianity, except the former lacks love and mercy. Spinoza's God is only the efficient cause of everything. Chapter 5, Hegel and Spinoza. Hegel wonders at the Spinozism in his lecture on the history of philosophy, either Spinozism or no philosophy. There would be no philosophy except for the Spinozism. He writes further, he who begins to philosophize must bathe in the ether of the one substance. Hegel's enthusiasm about the Spinozism corresponds to the motto of Hentai Pan in his younger days. However, on the other hand, Hegel criticized the substance the concept of Spinoza, namely the system of one substance looks down on the individuality and the uh, subjectivity. Therefore, Hegel tries to grasp the, uh, the truth, not only as the substance, but also as the subject. This means that Hegel combined Spinozism with the Fetanism, in the birth of the dialectical philosophy. For more academic research, see the below web page. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. See you later.